As you tackle common laboratory tasks, including measuring pH, it's important to choose the right equipment. Although pH testing seems simple, it can be complex and not always easy to understand or get right. The key to accurate pH analysis is using the correct electrode. Because there are so many options, it's often hard to know which pH electrode is right for your application. You may have an electrode type that you've used for years, but is that the best choice for your sample? Are your results accurate, reproducible, and reliable? Does the electrode respond quickly and calibrate easily? Does it last as long as expected? In today's video, we'll talk about five key considerations to help you choose the right pH electrode. We'll review important factors, including your sample, container dimensions and precision needs, as well as electrode design differences and meter compatibility. Let's begin by discussing sample considerations. Different samples require different electrodes. When samples have certain chemical properties, lack water content, have high or low ionic strength, particulates, or are viscous, you need an electrode that can accommodate that sample type. You may also be managing a sample at a high temperature or the extremes of the pH scale. When a sample is no longer simple, it's important to think about alternative options. For more information, watch our video on how to choose the right pH electrode for your sample. Once you've determined what meets your needs, you should consider the dimensions of your electrode and container. While many people measure pH in standard beakers, sometimes the sample container is too large, small, or narrow for the electrode, or there isn't enough of the sample itself. That's why it's important to know the dimensions of your container before selecting an electrode. Long-reach electrodes measure pH in large containers. Thin-stemmed electrodes measure pH in narrow-necked tubes. And semi-micro and micro-electrodes measure pH in small containers. You should also consider your pH sensing bulb style if you have unusual samples. For surface pH measurements conducted on paper, foods, or even agar plates, special pH electrodes with flat sensing bulbs can be used. For measurements that require some level of sample penetration, spear-tipped electrodes are available. Next, you should consider precision. The level of precision required for your readings is important. That's why most manufacturers offer a three-tiered system. Basic, standard, and advanced electrode options can achieve varying levels of precision under ideal conditions. Basic approximately 0.1 or 0.05 pH units. Standard, approximately 0.02 pH units. Advanced, approximately 0.01 pH units. Higher precision electrodes may be more costly, but they can offer greater sample compatibility, easier calibrations, and fewer measurement issues. Be sure to check your electrode specifications and choose the precision level that's right for you. Now it's time to investigate design. Not all electrodes are built the same. Differences in design are often a result of the electrode's expected use in a specific sample or application. One commonality is that all pH electrodes have a reference system. The part that makes contact with the sample is called the reference junction, and it can differ depending on the electrode design. Most glass electrodes have a porous ceramic junction, and many epoxy electrodes use a wick or fiber junction. These junctions are appropriate for most general purpose samples, but can be problematic for others. For better results, use an electrode with a more stable reference system or a more suitable reference junction. Maintenance is an important design consideration as well. While all electrodes require cleaning, non-refillable gel-filled electrodes tend to require less maintenance than refillable electrodes. For aggressive samples, a basic gel-filled and low-maintenance electrode is a suitable option that can be disposed of 
when it stops working. For high temperature samples, refillable electrodes are more suitable than gel-filled electrodes because the latter can be damaged. Refillable electrodes tend to last longer and have a longer warranty because they can be restored. An electrode's design will determine how easy it is to clean. For example, a pH sensor bulb on a glass electrode is easy to reach, but the bulb on many epoxy electrodes is protected by prongs and can be harder to access. Renewable or flushable reference junctions, as shown here, are easy to maintain and clean. Simply press down on the cap to refresh the junction or to drain and refill the electrode. Thermoscientific Orion Ross Surflow pH electrodes have this very useful feature. Regardless of design, the more time you invest in cleaning and maintaining a pH electrode, the longer it will last. The body material of an electrode also has a big impact on durability. Epoxy body electrodes are generally robust enough to protect the pH bulb and are a good choice for the field or production floor. Glass electrode bodies may seem more fragile, but they're resistant to most chemicals and are often required for use with petrochemical or solvent samples. A pH electrode is just one part of the pH system. Even with a good pH electrode, if it's not connected to a good pH meter, your readings may be compromised. Not all electrodes will work with every pH meter, so you need to determine that the electrode will connect to your existing meter. The Orion pH electrode family uses a BNC connector for pH electrodes, so they are compatible with all thermoscientific Orion pH meters. At the center of every pH system is a pH electrode that drives the accuracy and reproducibility of the entire process. The key is selecting the correct pH electrode from the start. By considering the five main points discussed in this video, you can remove the guesswork and help ensure you're selecting the right pH electrode for your application. Thank you for watching and learning. To learn more, visit thermofisher.com forward slash pH electrode.